So what I've got here, this is a, uh, you can see it's an envelope. Um, and if you open the envelope, what we see is this, this object here. This is a British identity card and it's very simple. It's just simply a, a folded piece of card. Uh, inside we can see uh, some more information. We can see that it was issued to uh, someone called Sarah Gibbon. She lived in Ashton in Makerfield in the 1940s. So what this was was an identity card that Sarah would have used to prove who she was. And these were issued to every single adult in the population. So this was an extensive uh, and very important, but very simple piece of information technology on which a small amount of data is contained in the card, but the government had collected, whilst issuing this card, a mass of other data and information about Sarah. Britain has had identity cards twice in its history. Um, in the First World War they were introduced briefly, it didn't really work. This is a Second World War identity card. So these were first issued in 1939. We can see that the dates on this are from 1946 and 1950. So this is an identity card that lasted into peacetime. In fact, it actually existed for as long in peacetime as it did during the Second World War. And they were introduced for just three purposes. They were there for national security, for the direction of labour, most crucially for rationing. Basically, if Sarah wanted to eat, she had to produce this identity card um, to claim her rations uh, in the 1940s. And that meant that Sarah kept it. And that was a trick that the government had learned, that in the First World War these cards had been lost uh, because they hadn't been connected to something that people actually wanted or used, that they weren't paying attention to them. And the trick was to make them embedded in something that people absolutely had to do, which was to eat. So if you wanted your rations, you had to use your and keep your identity card. The other thing about this that I think is, is relevant is there was a as a phenomenon called data creep. Basically, this was introduced just for three simple purposes. But by the time that it was abolished, 39 different government departments were using it for all kinds of purposes. And that is something that, again, we're worried about now. We're worried about who has the data, is it being used appropriately? You know, most recently, the data that we give up to Facebook has been shared in ways that we never gave our consent for, has been used for all kinds of purposes that we wouldn't have given our consent for. I do think that for all the problems we have in the world, if we take a historical perspective, then we begin to see them in a different light. We can see different ways of solving them, perhaps. And that's where the history of science and technology is crucial for understanding and thinking through today's problems.